And Disney's reportedly uh, ahead in its proxy battle against Nelson Peltz, uh, with over half of all the shares uh, voted. Major investors like BlackRock and T. Rowe Price are supporting Disney uh, in the annual meeting uh, where final votes will be cast is happening uh, today. Joining us now, Nell Minow, uh, Value Edge Advisors Vice Chair, used to be with uh, ISS, um, and no longer ISS President Nell, but uh, ISS is actually supporting Pelts, as is, is Cowper's. You don't, you have a hard time understanding why. I get ISS, you kind of understand they've, they've supported some activists in the past, but Cowper's less so? Cowper's has supported activists in the past, too. Um, I do have a hard time understanding it. Remember that ISS is supporting only one of Peltz's three nominees. So they're really hedging their bets a little bit there. I think the issue that probably put them over the edge was succession. Uh, they have a tendency, ISIS has a tendency to support uh, minority slates. And so the idea of just putting one person, adding one person to the board to shake things up a little bit, I think is something that they're very susceptible to. But I think that's a huge mistake. You know, number one rule is that the cure should not be worse than the disease. And Iger's record is a lot better than Peltz's. I have a tendency to support activists, too. I've been an activist. And Peltz has violated activist rule 101, which is you've got to pick a company that is significantly underperforming its peer group, that the shareholders, are, you have to leverage shareholder animosity. And I don't think you see that at Disney. You... Uh I agree with Jeff Sonnenfeld on a lot of the points that he's made, but, but I, I mean, if you just had to summarize, you would say that uh, Nelson Peltz is, you know, complaining a lot, but, but not really, uh, hasn't really proposed anything that would uh, help the fortunes of Disney in any meaningful way, or, or at least if he has a, if he has them, he hasn't stated what he would do. Exactly right. You know, he's acting more like a politician. If I say this in Washington, I'm sorry, politicians, but he's acting more like a politician than like a, uh, a, a business person. He's making a lot of general statements about tying pay to performance. Yeah, we all love to tie pay to performance, but he's not saying exactly what performance that is. And other than succession planning, which, let's face it, Disney already bungled one time, uh, let's, uh, you know, and had to bring in their former CEO. Let's hope that they don't bungle it this time. Uh, he really has not been specific enough. And when he has been specific, he said the single dumbest thing he could possibly have said. He complained about having too many minorities and women in the movies. First of all, that shows that he doesn't understand Disney's sources of revenue. The parks are hugely more important in terms of operating income than the movies are. And second, he, under, he misunderstands that the people who buy stock, and of course, you know, Disney's got a lot more individual investors than, uh, than most companies. Believe me, Ron DeSantos is not buying Disney stock. People who buy Disney stock buy it because they like the movies. And by the way, Black Panther became the ninth biggest grossing movie, not of the year, but of all time, the year that it came out. So Disney seems to be understanding the movie business a lot better than Nelson Peltz. Right. He, I think he entered the culture wars a little bit. And, and you... The examples you bring up, I, obviously, it might not be problematic, but, you know, I really like the original Snow White with, I, I guess I can't even say what they were, seven. That, that, to turn them into seven magical full-size creatures, <laughs> now, I mean, you got to admit, that ruined it for me. I don't want to see that. Do you? Well, we haven't seen it yet, so we don't know, but Disney has been doing back. very I, well. I don't Disney's know what we're going to do with Lord of the Rings. I mean, it's going to be, you know, I mean, <laughs> and if they don't have actual elves playing the elves, then it's there. It's cult cultural misappropriation there, too. So we got to find a lot of you, elves because there's actual what I'm armies. Hoping, I will um, tell you what the, I'm hoping for the, from the meeting is I hope they release the new Deadpool trailer. The new, which one? Deadpool trailer, because that movie is going to oh, be Deadpool. amazing. Uh, is it more superhero stuff? Nell's a superhero. Hey, hey, no. I'm a fan, too. We talked earlier, uh, <laughs> Andrew brought this, and, and it is true. Do you normally see companies say, you know, uh, we've gotten some early returns here, uh, and we're winning? I mean, they, they've, they've said that. I've heard it nonstop, that we're about halfway through, the and, and we're winning. Actually, the that they have other people who monitor They, they have other people, they, they but they're the people. only ones who know. But they do have other people who monitor this So stuff. they leak it to somebody else well, or whatever. There's, there's proxy services firms that right. monitor some of this stuff. It's, Let me tell you something. In a, in a proxy fight, it is anything goes. It is out-and-out really? out war. Not like, not like a political... 
back no, no but not like an election the, the votes are in and the proxy solicitors know this and the proxy solicitors proxy have been all over this the and single third biggest, parties who do that yeah, that's right. They hire people who do that. And I certainly, I have voted my shares. They know how I voted. Maybe they don't know that it was me, but I voted my shares in favor of the Disney board and uh, and against the some of the really idiotic shareholder proposals that uh, that are on the, the list as well. Andrew. What are the rules about, what are the rules about disclosure of that prior to the election? I mean, in the same way that we've always had questions about a political campaign and uh, whether you could influence the outcome by telling folks uh, where things are going before the the votes are, are, are or the, the the booths are closed, right? Like the news news organizations deal with this on on election day every year. How, do, how is do. it supposed to work in, in in this world? As I said, it it often works with them disclosing ahead of time. And in fact, I'm old enough to remember when votes were not private and they knew who voted how, and would put a lot of pressure. On people, uh, you have to remember that when they disclose that, we can still change our votes until the, until midnight last night. So uh, when they're disclosing it, that still gives people a chance to change their votes, and I think that's fine. I didn't tell him that. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, now I was going to talk about a, a, a couple other things in media. One thing I thought you pointed out was was interesting was, I mean, Disney shares were two hundred dollars. I, I would be unhappy. But you said relative to its peers, because media has just been, oh, my God. I was going to say bloodbath, but I'm afraid to say bloodbath. Media shares have been uh, undergoing a lot of pressure uh, yeah. at, at this point. So Disney probably is, is even has fared maybe a little bit better than the average media company. Is that, is that your point? <laughs> you may have heard that there was a strike last year. That was pretty bad. And before that, we had a pandemic. So, yeah, media. And also, to be honest, media companies... Uh, particularly Netflix and Amazon were overspending uh, for a while. They, it was it was just a, an avalanche of money that was going in all different directions. So there's been some constriction. Disney, unlike say Netflix, uh, has got a lot of other things that it's doing. As I pointed out, the parks, which I visited earlier this year, seem to be doing just fine. Uh, are are uh, a larger source of operating revenue than uh, than the movies.